My name is Cassandra Wagner, and I'll be your guide through the life of one of the most famous mathematicians in history, Leonard Euler. Euler was born April 15, 1707, in Basel, Switzerland. His father, Paul Euler, was a Protestant minister in Rehen, a small town outside of Basel, and his mother was the daughter of another Protestant minister. Hence, Euler grew up in a religious environment, with two sisters and two brothers. His father attended the University of Basel, studying theology and mathematics under Jacob Bernoulli, a famous mathematician during this time period. In fact, Paul Euler and the Bernoulli family were extremely close. Paul lived with Joanne Bernoulli, another famous mathematician, while they were undergraduates at the university. Thanks to his relationship to the Bernoulli family, Paul was able to learn advanced mathematics, which he passed on to his sons at an early age. As a child, Leonard was sent to school in Basel, where he lived with his grandmother. Since the school was rather poor, it did not offer mathematics class. But, thanks to his father's teachings, Leonard was extremely passionate about learning and read several books on his own and took private lessons to continue. He had a phenomenal memory. He was able to memorize books and tables just looking at it once. Due to his memory and his passion for learning, Euler was accepted into the University of Basel in 1720 at the age of 13. Although his father hoped that Leonard would follow his footsteps to becoming a minister, Joanne Bernoulli, a professor at the university, saw his potential and took him under his wing to teach him everything that he knew. In 1722, Euler graduated from the University of Basel with a master's in mathematics and physiology at the age of 15. In late 1726, after the death of Nicholas Bernoulli, Euler was offered a position to teach the mechanics of physiology in the St. Petersburg Academy of Sciences. Euler accepted the position and moved to St. Petersburg, Russia in May 1727. When he got there, he was appointed to work in the mathematics physics department instead of the physiology department which he was initially offered. Despite Euler's irritation in the switch in his positions, this mistake gave him the opportunity to accomplish as much as he did. While teaching part-time in St. Petersburg, he also served as a medical lieutenant in the Russian army in 1727. He gave up his post in the Navy in 1730 when offered a full-time job at the St. Petersburg Academy as a physics professor. While at St. Petersburg, Euler lived with Daniel Bernoulli, the head of the mathematics department at the St. Petersburg Academy. In 1733, Daniel Bernoulli returned home to Basel, and Euler took his position as the head of the mathematics department. In 1734, he married Katharina Giselle. They had 13 children, but only five made it to adolescence due to the high infant mortality rate during the 17th century. Euler suffered through great heartache during the death of his eight children, but claimed that he had some of his greatest mathematical discoveries while holding his baby and having a child playing at his feet. Him and Katharina were married for 39 years until her death in 1773. Three years later, he married her half-sister, Salome Abigail Giselle. Euler's health began to decline in 1735 when he began to have problems with his eyesight due to overexertion during cardiographic work. The overstraining of his eyes caused him to suffer from several severe fevers, which almost cost him his life. He kept all of his health issues from his parents and the Bernoulli family in order to keep them from worrying. He eventually recovered from the fevers, but at a cost. His entire right eye was destroyed and deformed, causing him to lose vision in it. Becoming blind in his right eye did not stop him, however. A year after losing his sight, he published his first book, The Mechanica. He also wrote several papers and articles and won the grand prize in 1738 and 1740 in the Paris Academy, one of the most prestigious academies at the time. In the 1730s, Euler became extremely reputable, and thanks to his growing popularity, King Frederick the Great invited him to work at the newly created Berlin Academy. Ecstatic, Euler accepted the offer as mathematic director and moved to Berlin in 1741. Euler was extremely happy in his new job, which can be demonstrated in his letter to his friend, which he wrote. I can do anything I wish in my research. The king calls me his professor, and I think I am the happiest man in the world. As a matter of fact, he spent 35 happy years in Berlin, during which he wrote over 350 articles and several books, including letters to a German princess 
and the introduction to analysis of the infinite, where he named E and I and defined Euler's identity. In 1759, Maupertus, the president of the Berlin Academy, passed away, and Euler assumed leadership of the academy. However, he was not in good terms with the king at the time, so he did not have the president's title or salary, although he did do all the work a president would. After several issues between him and the king, Euler decided to leave the Berlin Academy and go back to St. Petersburg in 1766. After returning back to Russia, Euler's vision in his left eye began to fade due to illness. In 1771, one of Euler's most difficult years, a fire destroyed his house, leaving him and his family temporarily homeless. Shortly after the fire, Euler had a cataract surgery in hopes of restoring his fading vision. After a very painful procedure, Euler's vision seemed to be restored. Unfortunately, this only lasted a few days, and he went completely blind because he failed to take the necessary precautions after his surgery. Being completely blind, you'd think his productivity would diminish. However, that would be wrong. He actually became more productive after losing his vision. In order to be able to produce his works, he would have a table of scribes who would furiously write everything he would say for his mathematical papers. When new papers came in, he would have someone read them out loud for him and, thanks to his fantastic memory, he could map out the entire problem in his head. In fact, in 1772, he performed all the calculations for the second theory of lunar motion without writing a single thing down. He did the entire calculation only in his head. While being blind, he produced one paper per week, amounting to hundreds of papers published. Euler was often considered the Beethoven of mathematics. Beethoven composed music he never heard, and Euler was producing mathematics he couldn't see. Euler died on September 18, 1783 in St. Petersburg, Russia, due to a brain hemorrhage. But his legacy lives on to this day. Euler worked in all fields of mathematics, including geometry, calculus, trigonometry, algebra, number theory, physics, lunar theory, and astronomy. Euler had a huge quantity of math which he published. No one did more mathematics than Euler did. The Swiss Academy tried to publish his collected works. Starting in 1911, they published about one year annually, and 97 years later, they are still not done. Thus far, they have published 75 volumes of the opera Omnia, with over 25,000 pages. You can derive Euler's identity using Euler's formula which is e to the ix is equal to cosine x plus i sine x, where e is Euler's constant, i is an imaginary number, and x is any given angle. If you set x equal to pi, you will get Euler's identity, which is e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. In a survey conducted by the Journal of Mathematical Intelligence, they asked several mathematicians what they believed the most beautiful result in mathematics of all time was, and they all voted for Euler's identity. The reason this identity is considered to be so beautiful is because it connects the five fundamental numbers in mathematics, e, which is the base of a natural log, i, which is the only number you can square and get a negative number, pi, which is the ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter, one, the identity property, and zero, the placeholder number. Another one of Euler's famous formulas is his polyhedral formula which says that v plus f is equal to e plus 2, where v is the number of vertices, f is the number of faces, and e is the number of edges. This formula works for a cube, isohedron, and several other solid bodies. In fact, in the Math Intelligence Survey, this was voted the second most beautiful result in history. Euler himself said, I find it surprising that these general results in solid geometry have not been previously noticed by anyone, so far as I am aware. <laughs>